Welcome to Daily Armor. Today we're going to be in the book of Luke, chapter number 1, looking at verse number 37. Luke 1 and verse number 37, and it says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Now here again, we need to look at what the scenario is, what is going on in the text, and that is in verses 26 through 38. And so let's look at that. Um, we're going to touch base here. Um, some of you may already know what this is about. Um, this is about Gabriel, the angel Gabriel. God had sent Gabriel to Mary to let her know that she was going to have a child. She was going to have a son, and she was going to call his name Jesus. Um, so let's look at that a little bit closer, looking at verse number um, 26, it says that, And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. So G Gabriel had a very specific um, task and was sent to a, a very specific woman, young lady. She was chosen specifically for God to do this special task. Um, this was, uh, you know, a shock to her. And yet she um, she fully submitted and accepted what all this that that was pretty much hard to comprehend. She fully accepted it. Um, and let's look a little bit further. It says then, um, and who was he sent to? To verse number twenty seven says to a virgin, and that's vitally important as we know. Um, we don't want to ever. Um, be guilty of of thinking about she was just a, a nice young lady, but that she was a virgin. This was this is very very important, um, vital important information here to a virgin, a spouse to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. Very important, and the virgin's name was Mary. So um, very important the lineage here, um, being of the house of David. Uh, very important that she's a virgin here. I mean, the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. She probably didn't feel highly favored. She was probably just a simple young lady, a simple young young woman um, getting ready to get married. And she probably didn't feel highly favored, but she was. She was highly favored by God. Um, sometimes you might not feel highly favored. Maybe you don't feel highly favored by, um, you know, by your coworkers or by your spouse or by your um, your siblings or your or your parents. Um, maybe you don't feel highly favored just among people in general, and maybe that's maybe that doesn't even bother you. Um, that's then that's good if it doesn't even bother you. Um, Mary probably was just you know why would somebody take notice of me? I'm not done anything to take notice of, but God took notice of her and decided to use her and specifically um, for this purpose. And this was a very very um, a very wonderful blessing, but it also came with a a lot of um, a lot of things that she was going to be burdened with as well. So a lot of things that she was going to have to go through and experience that were going to be so difficult. Um, but God was with her. Let's continue on. And it says, um, and when she saw him, she was troubled. So she this was this was all a shock to her. Um, the angel is comforting her in verse number 30. It says, um, and the angel said unto her, fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. He's saying, you know, don't, I know this is fearful. I know this is shocking. You know, it's okay. Don't fear. Um, and he goes on to explain to her what's fixing to take place. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord shall give him, give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of and of his kingdom there shall be no end. That's talking about Jesus in such detail. I mean, the, the lineage of David there is vitally important. All of this is so important. Um, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom shall there shall be no end. He's, there's no end to his kingdom because he's God and he has no beginning and he has no ending. Verse number 34 says, Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? How can this be? I'm, I'm a virgin. How can this be? I, I know I've, 
I'm, I'm espoused, but I'm not married yet. Um, and the angel said unto her, and he's explaining how it's going to happen. This is still going to be shocking. This is still going to be something that sometimes that the Lord's going to show you how it's going to happen. You're just thinking, really? How can that be? This is so shocking. And yet, you know, we, we believe by faith of the, that something is so impossible and how God chooses to do something. Um, it, you know, we can't get in the way uh, when God chooses to do something. And so look here how he explains how it's going to happen. And the angel answered and said unto her, verse number 35, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. The power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. He's saying, and look at it, and then our main verse is, for, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. What's going on here? We've got a virgin that's going to have a son. We've got a barren woman that's going to have a son. Both of these ladies are pregnant, but it's, it's absolutely impossible. If you're a virgin, you can't have a, you can't have a child. If you're barren, you can't have a child. And so both of these things are going on. These are, are huge, impossible situations. And I'm not saying that I'm fixing to have a child. You're fixing to have a child. I'm just saying, look at, look at situations and they are so impossible. Yet God is, is challenging us that with God, nothing shall be impossible with God. That's the, that's the key to all of it with God. Nothing, not even a virgin having a baby, not even a barren woman in her old age having a baby. We've already talked about Sarah, um, you know, previously, and she was well stricken in years and was beyond, you know, beyond those childbearing years. She had been barren all that time and God wait till she's 90 to give her a child. That's impossible. That's impossible. I think about my grandmother. She was, um, she was in her nineties when she passed, and I can't even comprehend that that her having a child when she was ninety. That was just, you know, that's just um, shocking and amazing. And that that God did that for Sarah. It's just as shocking when He's doing this for Mary, who's a young woman and has not known a man yet and is a virgin and, and same thing with Elizabeth here she was she was older and she was barren all these years never had a child but then God had a plan for her and it was specifically for this time and for this season and, and they were cousins and so they were they were going to be a comfort to one another. Elizabeth Elizabeth was able to be a comfort to Mary who was going through this this was going to be even more difficult because she was espoused. She wasn't married yet. All of this stuff is going to be said about her. This impossible situation that the Lord has put her in, it's going to cause her some grief. It's going to cause her some backlash. It's going to cause her some harm. It's going to cause her some heartache. But... He has chosen her for a great and mighty task. And I don't know what maybe he's, he's might be choosing me for something and I don't know what it is yet. And maybe he's choosing you for something and maybe you don't even know what it is yet, but it's going to come with some blessings, but it's also going to come with some burdens and it's going to be absolutely impossible, but we have to cling to a word on it. See, Mary had a word on it. The angel was sent from God to tell her that she, is, she has been highly favored and that God was going to be with her and that God was going to overshadow her and going to be right there with her every step of the way. He was going to make sure she was taken care of. Remember, when she goes to have the child, she goes. they, they have to go to Bethlehem. That's where he was supposed to be born. The Messiah was going to come from Bethlehem. And God made sure she was exactly where she needed to be when the time was right. And then when, then when uh, you know, the decree was, was sent out for every child under the age of two to be killed to make sure um, that the, the, the blessed next king 
um, trying to ensure that he was that he was killed, God made sure that they were able to leave and flee from that area. And Joseph got her out of there and got that child out of there. And God was with her. And whatever I'm fixing to go through, whatever I'm fixing to face, and it's going to be a blessing, but there's also going to come with some burdens, some pain, some grief, maybe some heartache, whatever you're fixing to face, whatever you're going to go through. God is saying, I'm with you. I'm going to be right there with you. I'm going to overshadow you. And yes, it is impossible, but with God, nothing shall be impossible. And that's the key to all of it is nothing. No matter what you come up with in your scenario, when God is in the midst, when it, when God is, is put his stamp of approval on it, when he say, now it's time, when he says, now you're ready, when he says, now things are, you know, these are, this is what this is going a, a, a part of my plan. This is part of my plan, not, not mine, but his is part of his plan. When he, when God is saying, this is part of the plan, um, then nothing, nothing shall be impossible. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you again soon.